60s child. Do you, Do you remember? remember? Coal fires. Yes, in this video we're going to be looking at coal fires. If you, like me, grew up in the 60s, then you will remember the coal fire. And we have a very fond, romantic memory of it. Sat with the chair pulled up close, or sat on the air, feeling the warmth from the flames and the glow round the room of the flickering coals. Toasting your feet by the fire. And speaking of toast, I bet you did this as well. And there was nothing better than after a bath running downstairs and getting in front of the fire to dry off. Even our pets enjoyed the fire. Yes, we all have fond memories of our fire in the front room, but really are we looking at it through rose-tinted glasses? I think we seem to forget some things that were really bad about having coal fires. Coal was king for years and years, but it was dirty, black, horrible stuff that had to be dug out the ground by these guys. And we all know these miners worked their socks off. It was horrible, damp, dirty, dark, dusty, not to mention downright dangerous as well. Yes, those miners worked really hard. Those days we relied on coal to provide our gas. Remember how big gas works used to be? I won't bore you with all the details, but basically they extracted gas from coal. And the process worked quite well. The problem was it wasn't very good for the environment. I can still remember the smell from the gas works. But until we discovered North Sea gas, this is how we got our gas. So we relied on coke for our heating and hot water. Many of the older houses had a range like this. This was what my nan had. Or you'd have an open fireplace in the front room like this. There were paraffin eaters about like these, but to be honest, they stunk to high heaven. And electric fires were in their infancy and quite dangerous. There were fireplaces of all different shapes and sizes, but the basics remained the same. The fireplace we had at home was tiled similar to these, but ours was quite plain really. Now I grew up in a tiny three bedroomed council house, so only the master bedroom had a fireplace in it. Our bloody rooms were freezing. I'm not kidding, you used to go to bed shivering and you could see your breath. My kids think I'm telling porkies when I used to say we used to get frost on the inside of the windows. And when you share a bed with two other brothers there was always a fight over the hot water bottles. And there was no real quilts then, you had that feather eider down but most of us had these. It wasn't uncommon in them days for your mum to put a big coat over your aunt bed. <laughs> I can remember putting your legs in the sleeves to keep them warm. Now fires did come in a lot of different shapes and sizes but the basics were all the same. You had your fire front and a fire grate to put the coal on and the ash pan underneath to catch the ashes. And you'd have a double ended tool like this. One end was used to pull the fire front away from the fire and the other end was used to lift the ash pan. And sometimes it served as a hammer. You see quite often in the morning the coals were still burning hot. Yes there was a lot of work to a coal fire. Remember these companion sets? You got your poker for poking the fire, a little brush and a spade to brush any spillages up. There were loads of different designs. We had one of these at one time. He had the tools hung up at the back of him. We also had a set of these, I remember, with a ship on top. You used to fascinate me that as a kid. Oh, every morning you'd clean your fire out and you'd have this ash, the dusty leftovers from last night's fire. And they'd go in the dustbin, which was made of metal them days, so it wasn't too bad. Now with all that ash and all the food waste and everything, that bin could get quite heavy. But bin men were a different breed then and they just slung it on the back, often carrying it from round the back of your house to the lorry at the front. In the early 60s the lorries looked like this, then they changed to this, and eventually ended up like this. As I said before, we have this romantic image of coal fires, and even in this picture it all looks very quaint and lovely. But in reality, those coal men who delivered your coal were damned hard. From the truck they put the sack on their backs, carry it round the back of your house to where your coal store usually was. Maybe a coal shed like this or a bunker. Or even like this one. <laughs> and if you lived in the older terraced houses, they'd deliver it round the backs and put it through a little hatch like this. It was a bit hit and miss though and usually you ended up half a day cleaning the stuff up. So you've got your coal in your coal shed, 
but you needed something to carry it in like these scuttles if you were posh or just a bucket. So you bucket of coal and get tuck in the house. You'd need something to start the fire off with, say like fire lighters or newspaper, bit of kindling maybe, even twigs. You'd roll your newspaper in balls like this and put them in the grate. Put your kindling on top, or your fire lighters for that matter. Stack some coal on top of that and then set light to the paper and hopefully start the coal burning. And sometimes you do this to draw the fire as my mum used to say. And my poor mum had to do all this before we even got up. But once you got your fire going it was lovely I must admit. Another piece of equipment was a fire guard essentially if you had little ones. You could even dry clothes on it although many a time I've seen my dad's shirt scorched. If you were posh you might have one of these, a gas fueled poker, an indoor flamethrower, health and safety eh? You might have an all night burning fire like this that died low but never actually went out. With all that smoke you got a lot of this smog combination of fog and smoke. And what about this stuff, soot? It was everywhere and it was a bugger to get out the carpets. I have a vivid memory of this stuff and I'll tell you the story. In my town we have what's called a walking day. This has been going on for donkey's years. Here's an old film of it now. Basically we all get new clothes as kids and you go walking through the town with your churches etc. Or you might just go and watch it but you still got new clothes. Your mum did a best player. You'd watch the parade and your aunties and uncles and friends or your parents would give you coppers. So you can imagine as a kid it was a special day. All kids were allowed in the pubs for that one day and you'd have a glass of pop or even a glass of shandy and a couple of bags of crisps and what have you. The fair was always in town for this event and that's where you spent your walking day money on the fair. My favourite was the speedway and the waltzes. So anyhow, here's me with my two brothers and we're all smartly dressed, ready for the walks. But even though it's June, it is bloody freezing. So we're all sat round the fire, sat on the half. And suddenly, whoosh, a massive soot fall. Yes, we were covered in it. We thought it was quite funny, but my mum didn't think so. Mind you, we soon stopped laughing when she started scrubbing back of our necks. Them days, the old Belfast sink doubled up as a bath for the kids. And that was basically because you could use a kettle of hot water in the sink, whereas filling the bath meant putting the immersion heater on, which cost money, as my dad always reminded us. So, to prevent the soot falling like this, you had to have your chimney swept every now and again. And chimney sweeps weren't this romantic. They were hard-working guys as well. It was a dirty, horrible job. By the end of the 60s, most houses in Britain were being converted to have gas fires or electric fires. These modern fires were welcomed by most families. Just turn the knob and you've got instant heat. Some people have actually gone back to solid fuel fires, but not me. I think the only wood burning and coke burning I do is in a burner outside in the garden. Now before I end this video, there are a couple of things I want to remind you of. I don't know whether you did this or not, but me and my brothers, we certainly did. Did you ever get a crisp packet, hold it close to the flames until it shrunk to a tiny little packet? Another thing I remember doing is throwing sugar on the fire. It used to light up lovely. Putting a couple of your old soldiers on used to be quite interesting. And melting the ends of his arms or legs when they broke off meant you could repair him. And you weren't part of the gang unless you could juggle a lit one of these. I will say most of this was done when my mum was pegging out washing or something. We never did it in front of her, they got a proper slap. Anyway, for any kids watching, don't try this at all. Because if you do, this is what'll happen. For those of you who do miss the coal fire, I'm going to leave you with some footage of a coal fire burning. Enjoy and I'll see you later.